I hope you've got your run show, City. We'll see you after school as usual. I'll leave the bell brown. Will you dress me, Tom Fierce? I want to dress you one of these days. I can hardly wait. And how's our little King of the Incendiary bombs? Why don't you go where you know it's going permanently? I'd go where your specs. Oh, McGill, you all talk. I've got souvenirs that'll make your hair curl. Bits of shrapnel. Me mum uses those as door stops. No, not shrapnel. If you must know the real stuff. You're a bit slow, McGill. You miss all the best stuff. Who says? I do. Where'd you get it? You do it know nothing, McGill. Get away. That's just paper money, that. Nazi money. Look here. She's called mind leaving. Go on. you got to do all us. I feel sorry for you. I really do. Is that the best you can do? A few bits of paper? Shut up, Sam. No, actually, I can do better. Genuine Nazi still got blood on it. Shove off. Better than your rotten shrapnel, any old dear. Hey, you, sicky nitty. Were you listening? No. You'll have to be punished for that later. <laughs> He's found it. I'll tell you something else. There's a policeman here at break. Took Stanley in the way his car. What is the found? It... the police? Well, they will eventually, particularly when I bought that flashing that stuff around. I wish I could have told him what we found, just to see his face. Shut up, Sam. Be like that. Keep mum. Do you think I should go and look? I will, if you like. No, it was my discovery. Hey, carriage juice. Borrow your bike. Cost you. You going now? No time like the present. Sorry, Constable, I thought you were the murderer. What murderer? The Polish fella from the camp at Monk Seaton. He strangled the waff. Didn't you know? What are you talking about? Last Saturday night. It's common knowledge. The one from the trip shop told us. Rubbish. There's been no murderer here. Honest? Look, I'm telling you. Clear off before I run you in. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Here, lad. Haven't I seen you before somewhere? No, sir. I don't think so. Come back here, lad. <laughs> Well? If I'm going to pass straight through it, I had a brush with the law. You could? No. It was only Patty Hardy. He couldn't catch chicken pox. Watch, here comes the little. I found this this morning. Anyone know what it is? Incendiary bomb and tail fence, sir. Bots are brown down on three base, got 15 of those. Charles McGill's got 10. That right, McGill? Eleven, sir, actually, sir. They're not like this one, I fancy. This is a new type that Jerry have just started using. Twice as powerful, twice as deadly. He's up to something. Watch out. Now, to continue our discussion on German armaments, I'd like you to consider this. What's a picture of a machine gun you've got? They're really onto us. Unnatural. Right, settle down. This is a picture of a German machine gun, the MG15, caliber 7.62, firing 1,000 rounds a minute, effective range one mile. But I don't suppose any of you have seen a real one. Now, open your exercise books. I want you to write an essay. Subject, war souvenirs. We write up your street, Miguel, with your 11 tail pins. Yes, sir. I used to have the best collection of war souvenirs in the whole of Garmouth. I have 11 incendiary bomb fins, 26 pen pullets, 18 pieces of shrapnel. shrapnel including one piece of foot long and 50 empty cartridge cases. But now my collection is only second best because it's but... It's seen they treat the war like a game. Boys, headmaster, surely we all did the same in our time. I certainly never did. But now my collection is only second best because Bodza Brown in 3B has beaten me. He has a lot of German money and a picture of a German girl called Mein Liebling. I wish I knew where he'd got them. And, he, and he's got a German flyer's helmet still pongy with blood on it. I'd like to have that best of all. This is the level our education has brought them to. Well, 
You're onto it, sir. I'm sure of it. Where can I find this Budza Brown? Outside that door. He came for testing. Can I suggest you ask him to come in, sir? And when Sergeant Green has finished his interrogation, the beastly boy will have to answer to me. The six of the best. I don't care. Serves Bud's all right. He had a coming to him. He'd be livid. But, I mean, he hasn't got it, we have. But I needed the time to shift it from home. We'll take a while searching his house. Then what? The start of the rest of us. Oh, heck. Come on, Paul. Well, we'll hide it. I've got a place. Will it be all right? Save his houses as long as the war's on. The bloke warns his place. He's in the army. His dad minds are fun, but he's ancient. He only comes once in a blue moon, and then he hardly ever looks. Where are we going to put it? Up there in those rafters. Would it get rusty? I wrapped it in an oily rag. What'd you get? My dad brings him home from work for my mum to light the fire with. Come on. I don't know. You think of everything. Well, you've got to, haven't you? There's a war on, you know. You're in trouble and a mistake. It's got nothing to do with me. I've been searching high and low for you. Well, now you've found us. What do you want? There's a police car at your house. Crave Scott, my quick. No, hang on, Sim. It's there, I tell you. Ha, oh, I didn't go in. There'll be the thing we'll be after. They'll have to find it then, won't they? Hey, where is it? The less you know, the better. And if anyone asks Audrey Porton, you know nothing about the other night. They won't ask me. I'm a girl. Stop behaving like one, then. You won't spill the beans, will you? Look. No one's spilling any beans. We're going to keep our mouths shut. Well, I'm off home. If anyone asks, I didn't see you. Hey, old you, watch your phone explode with bombs. <laughs> <laughs> this is it, then. What we do now? We both keep our mouths shut. The gun won't be found till Bunty comes home from the war. But what's the point of a souvenir if you can't brag about it? Who wants to brag? Bud's a brag, and look where it got him. Well, then, then what's the point of having it, then? To fight the war, of course, to do our bit. Are you serious? Never more so. Look, you get to home. I'll see you tomorrow. You know nothing. Oh, and if anyone asks, we've been out collecting pennies for the guy. Penny for the guy? That's begging and vagrancy. I can have you up in court for that. Then you let her take me to court, no. I had many a penny for the guy when I was a lad. Didn't you, Sergeant? You are Charles Harold McGill. No, he's Charlie Pisa Bogler. Stop asking stupid questions. Please, don't tell me how to run my business. What's the matter, Dad? Charles McGill, have you found any war souvenirs in the last few days? One of your tail fin, I give it to Sam Jones. That's all? Yeah. Quite sure. The lad said so, didn't he? Where do you keep these souvenirs? In the shed. My mum won't allow them in the house. Right. We'll go and see, shall we? Come on, son. That's a trouble of that sort. All fuss and bother. But we haven't got no to haste. Sorry about this, but it is rather serious. Yes, but there's ways of doing things, isn't there? Ah. These will have to come along with us. But they're mine. I've been collecting them a year. All the kids have got them. The nation needs scrap metal. But they're the second best collection of gold. Ah, come on, Sergeant. Let the band keep them. What harm does it do? All such things are the property of the crown. Rubbish. What's the king want with a load of scrap? Nothing else? What's inside these hutches? No, Dad, please! You never want to tell me Robert's Dad, please! I think you'd better get up to bed, sir. I'm afraid we'll have to search the house. And the whole garden, if need be. You go into your mother, son. I'm stopping here. I don't trust policies. And so help me, if you break out, I'll have the lawyers on you in the morning. Fine day, sir. Thanks, I made it. Two full spoonfuls of sugar, sir. One at Donna Castle Nuffy. I don't wish to know that, sir, Major. No, sir. Tell you what, though. If you managed to win that wretched machine gun, I'd be more than grateful. 
And so would I be, sir. This post could do with a real thing. Out won't be home, guards. We've got nothing to guard the home with. No word then, sir. Nothing. If any of my boys have got the damn thing, they're keeping awfully quiet about it. Cheer up, sir. Kids are cunning little beggars. Just ain't your recruits. Can't turn your back for a minute with them. But we'll out manoeuvre them yet, sir. And if we get that gun, I know just the place we can use it. But it wouldn't be our sound major. We'd win it, sir. We'd win it. <laughs> in the garden. That was hot mad. But I didn't find anything. Nothing to find, was it? Wasn't it? Only 2,000 rounds of ammo. Well, a thousand and a half. Some had been fired out the second drum. I hid them in the rubber touch. I forgot about them when we heard it. <laughs> I went crackers when the bobby made a beeline for it. <laughs> Did you not search her? No. My dad wouldn't let him. Bye. I don't like treating me dad. I don't usually. Do you want to come to our, our house for tea? My mum asked. No, your cousin Gorn's coming round. He's on leave again. He brings his gun. My Auntie Rose won't have it in the house. <laughs> I don't know what the blue of the sideburns for anyway. There's been no bit of, bit of drizzle since we came in here. I said this is one meal that Hitler's not going to spoil, thank you very much. With Gordon, he has special... Sausage, is it? You should have bought something bigger. It's we could have taken pot shots at the Jerry's. <laughs> you can shoot down a bombing with one of these, Trash. Get away. We're trained for it. You aim about a hand's breadth in front of them to allow for the speed of the aircraft. Don't bombers fly too high? Don't you believe it. Most bombers fly about 5,000 feet, and 5,000 feet's a mile, right? This thing can kill it a mile. Oh, shut up, Gordon, talking like that. Ma'am, can, can German machine guns fire that far? Oh, aye, far further. <clears throat> Their smizers can go right through the trunk of a tree like that. Look, how many times do I have to tell you? Will you cut them before you put them in your mouth? Sorry, Mum. Surely me. Yeah, you're heavy. I'm glad we got that raid over early. I could do with a proper night's rest to my own bed. No, I wouldn't call your chickens, but there's still a yellow load on. The old clear went, we heard it. That was the end of Red Road. Them jellies are still a room somewhere. Best get my uniform on. It's a you'll be spoiled. Oh, I'll get ready first. No quiet, Chas. Being in more trouble with the law. What? Oh, no. That's no sneak raid. That's a real thing. If you don't act shut, quick. Oh, those sausages. Oh, for God's sake. The insurance policies. Never mind the insurance policies. If you don't let them show up, you don't get a move on. Look, did you close the door, love? I'm frightened somebody's going to nip in and pinch those insurance policies, man. It's all we've got. Oh, help. Where's Mrs. Spalding in here, Colin? Them beggars has come back again. We're all fighters. It's a trouble, son. We haven't got enough. Come on, lads, get the beggars! Is she dead? No, she's got a lick as round her ankles. No, I've had her hop all the way. I was on the outside, lad. And they blew the lobby door, Rita. Never I was for all to see. And they've done the wreck cinema and all. Yeah, you got a spot of brandy, pet. The brandy, Jack, we've left it in the house. Anybody could take it. I'll pull the chin, Ma. Trust our rate. Well, you'll get the Victoria Cross for that. Oh, you be quiet, Charles. Haven't you got any feelings? There's a lot of planes up. We're in for a button. God help us all.
hope Nana and Granda are safe. I'll go down and see as soon as it's late. Remember this lot being built? Will they ever build it again? God knows, son. There's your Uncle Jory. Hey, what fit the deal, Jory? I've thought I'd seen it all in the trenches in the last lot. But I've seen out like this morning. Many did? I had 27 so far, three out alive. Your so family already, right, Jory? Aye, but they've had it bad down there. Taking a youngin down, are you? Ah, well, I've heard no bad. Way. Best be for your son. Dad, what do you think? Come on. If I tell you to shut your eyes, so you shut them quick. No messing. All right? There now, I knew you'd come, Henny, and the bane. Do you see what that Hilton and the Germans have done now? If I could get hold of the stone so I'd strangle with my own hands. But come in, don't stand on what's left of the doorstep. Thank goodness it was family at the door. Are you all right, Dad? That Hilton? He should have been strangled at both. He's really done for your grand look. He was going to brew a pot of tea when it happened. It blew him all the way down the yard and tore the back of his top coat. The devils couldn't kill him in Caporetto in 1918, but they've nigh done for him this time. By, if he'd been 20 years younger, he'd have seen them off. What's that Hilda more than a house painter when all's said and done? I had a funny feel in that cupboard last night, you know. I dreamt he came back for his badge. The Austrian soldier your granda killed with his bayonet in Caporetto. He took his badge as a souvenir, and he's lived in mortal fear of him ever since. Oh, help! That bonus reminds him of the machine guns. He's badly. He hasn't done that in ten years. What we're going to do, son? You'll come home with us, Mother. Barrel cool, topped up with water, spare barrel in reserve, half worn out, sir. The breach is jammed. Recock, discharge, recock, discharge, recock, discharge, recock. Mix one of his powders. Recock, discharge, recock, discharge. Recock, discharge, recock, discharge, recock. You're mad. No, I'm not. But you can't take on Bodzer and the whole of the Wolfgang just to protect that fool with Sicky Nicky. Sicky Nicky is something we need. We've got to make it worth his while. But why do I have to build it? His garden. Because it's the right place. Nobody ever goes there anymore. I'm not even allowed to mention the Nichols family at home. Don't know why. But where else can you think of that's that private? All right, so we're great to walk you home each night. Personal bodyguard. That's right. And then Bodzer Brown will kick your head in. Well, that'll get you. Bully, we'll see. Good evening, niggas, old chap. Not you as well. Okay, my way are you, sickly child? Get away, McGill, he's ours. I beg your pardon, almighty one. Oh, star of the East, your beauty is dazzling, especially your hair good for eyes. Get away, McGill, I'm warning you. I've got no quarrel with you. Keep walking. Oh, thank you, a worshipful lord. You want to brush your luscious toenails? Get them! I told you this would happen. Right, McGill, you've asked for this. I'm a human girl. Why? Oh, then he asked me no, man. Right, Bodza, take your specs off. I don't your mum come complaining to me, Dad, if I break them. Playing for time, McGill. Get back all here. 
Me and McGill this time. He's had it. Chaz. Susan Reese. He's always picking her others. But not like that. We'd best get him to a hospital. He's in a terrible way. You go home, Nicky. He won't be picking any tonight. Thanks, McGill. You're the only one who's ever stood by me. Only because he wanted something. The headmaster was shot. I don't know if there wasn't a war on you to have been expelled. What got into you, Charles? Is that Hilda's to blame? Turning even our own kin into a lad. What is worse than anything, Bods and Brown? That's not the point. But what am I supposed to do if I'm little and weaker? You don't understand. He still doesn't understand. But, Dad! I don't care who they are, Chas, or what they've done. British boys. British boys, Chas, fight with their fists. Well, that isn't fair. I don't want any dinner, Maggie. I couldn't sit at the same table with him. There now, you've upset your father. 